Sai Ram devotees, welcome to Launch Park Sai Center's online satsang. Many of us are here today because we love ourselves enough to want to achieve our highest potential, to realize that we are God. Baba has given us one such method to help in this realization and that is a below affirmation. I am God. I am God. I am no different from God. I am the eternal, undifferentiated absolute. Grief and anxiety cannot affect me. I am always content. Fear cannot enter me. I am such a Tananda. I am pure existence, awareness, and bliss. I am omnipotent. I am all powerful. Nothing is impossible for me. I am omniscient. I am all knowing. There is nothing which is not known to me. I am omnipresent. I am present everywhere. I pervade this universe. I am Krishna, I am Buddha, I am Jesus. I am Sai, I am Sai, I am Sai. I am God, I am God, I am God. Before we begin our satsang, let us also set our intention for today's satsang and for life. I intend to realize that I am God, that we are all God. Let us now begin with our opening prayer.
that was not an ordinary birth. That was a divine birth. He was, prior to pregnancy, the mother was told, Mother Mary was told that, that she will have this divine child. And Joseph too was equally told that Mary will have this 
child, even though she was a virgin. And they both agreed that to have this divine child born in their home. Of course, they were living in a major, a stable, very humble beginnings in an unknown part of the world, very simply there. And they were there. Just like Bhagwan Baba, too, was born in a village hardly known. The very simple parents in a very simple home. Which tells us that God is all about simplicity. So, I would like to share today some of the teachings of Bhagwan Baba, extracts of his teachings on his Christmas Day message. And Baba tell us, tells us that God is omnipresent. We are all the embodiments of God. Today, people attribute various names and forms to God, like Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, Allah, Zarastra, and so many other names. And they celebrate their birthdays. Truly speaking, Baba tells us, there can be no birthday for God. To think that God took birth on a particular day in a year is a sign of ignorance. For God has no beginning and no end. God is eternal. God is also omnipresent. He's present everywhere, in every part of the world. In every space in the world, He's there. He's also omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. However, we're welcome to tell Him things from time to time. And so He's omnipresent, He's omniscient, and He's omnipotent. He can do whatever He wishes to do. He doesn't require special equipment, machinery, or anything like that. He can just, he just thinks about it and it happens. So these are the qualities of God. Truly speaking, can there be a birthday for God, Baba asks? No. Think that God took birth on a particular day in a year is a sign of ignorance. God is in the form of bread, the bread of life in every man. Soham, when we breathe in, there's a sound of so, and when we exhale, the sound of hum. That means, I am He. So Baba tells us, God is the bread of life that we have. And that bread of life is reminding us with each breath that we are him, He. We and Him are one and the same. We are not different. Though there are two words, namely God and individual, there's no difference between them. We and God, Baba says, are one, even though they are two different names. God, in fact, has no birth. He does not need to achieve any goals. However, in order to instill faith in the minds of people, He incarnates. That means He take a, takes a human body and lives amongst us. If there is birth, there has to be death too. But God is beyond birth and death. He has neither a beginning nor an end. To think there is a birthday for God is only our imagination, he says. Baba says, devotees limit God to a physical frame. Worship Him and celebrate His birthdays. That is all a figment of our imagination and does not correspond to the truth. So he calls upon us to turn our vision inward and search for your true self. Self-inquiry leads to true vision of God. Once you have vision, inner vision, you'd be free from all worries. So if you want to see God, we want to recognize God, we want to feel God, we want to have God be present with us at all times, all we have to do is to turn inside, turn our vision inside, and we will experience Him and feel Him. Baba tells us that we must search for God inside. He says you are making various efforts to experience divinity. Do not search for God outside. He is inside. Everything is in you. All that you see outside is illusory. Do not be carried away by the illusory world. Only then can you attain peace and ultimately realize the truth. I am I. To know this simple truth, you need not go through various sacred texts. Keep the text aside. Enjoy the taste of divinity within. Develop inner vision 
and visualize your true self. Lord Jesus was a noble soul. He declared that he was the son of God, but he never said that he was God. When Jesus was born, three royal wise men from the east were guided by a star to a cow, cow shed in Bethlehem, where the baby Jesus lay in a manger. He was radiating divine effulgence. The first of the wise men said, this child will love God. The second one said, he will be loved by God. And the third one said that he will one, he will be no different from God. The one who loves God is a messenger of God. The one whom God loves is the son of God. The one who understands the principle of unity becomes one with God. This is the inner meaning of the statements given by the, in the Bible. The one you think you are, the one others think you are, and the one you really are, you should understand the import of these statements. God is not moved simply by sweet words. You must translate those sweet words into action. You may not be a great hero in giving lectures on a platform, but if you are a zero in putting them in action, it will be of no use. You must become heroes in practical life. That is what gives me happiness. Jesus Christ and Muhammad were highly noble. How could they acquire such greatness and goodness? It was only by their good deeds. Therefore, you must acquire goodness along with greatness. In fact, goodness is greater than greatness. Baba says, whoever has acquired a quality of love will never be hated by others. Even the wild animals will not harm you when you have love. The great, great rishis of yours spend their lives peacefully in dense forests amidst wild animals. The wild animals fought among themselves but they did not cause any harm to these rishis. What man has to acquire is the weapon of love. Love alone can protect us, not an atom bomb or hydrogen bomb. Consider my example. I have only one and only weapon, that is love. Because of this, millions of people from around the world, every nook and corner of the globe, gather around me. Did I ever send any invitations to them? No spiritual practice can yield the desired result if the senses are misused. Have sacred vision. Speak good words. Hear only what is good. Entertain noble thoughts. There's no greater spiritual practice than this. This was the teaching of Buddha. The same was taught by Jesus also. The fishermen who wanted Jesus to fulfill their worldly desires. Peter wanted more fish, but ultimately he realized the futility of worldly desires. He wanted to go beyond the level of body and the mind as per the teachings of Lord Jesus. Jesus told them to give up hatred and to love all and to serve all. He exhorted them to develop faith in the principle of unity. Many disciples of Jesus interpreted the teachings of Jesus in their own way. When he was being crucified, he heard an ethereal voice. All are one, my dear son. Be alike to everyone. When the mother Mary was shedding tears, Jesus told her, Death is the dress of life. Death is like changing of dress. Do you find anybody wearing the same dress every day? Just as you change your dress every day, you change the body from birth to birth. It is the body that dies, not the life principally, he says. The spirit is immortal and non dual Matthew was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. He was an income tax collector by profession and he used to meet the fishermen to collect taxes. Jesus used to impart 
sacred teachings to the fishermen every day. Machu noted down all his teachings and wrote the Holy Bible. Later on, many others wrote the Bible based on their own feelings. Nowhere has Jesus ever stated that he was God or the Master. He always addressed God as his Father. He has shown the path to experience unity. He never gives, gives scope for multiplicity. He always said that all were divine. Jesus had 12 disciples. Judas was the 12th disciple who ultimately betrayed Jesus. At that time, there was only one Judas, but Baba says today there are many such Judases. Today the world is engulfed in unrest because of the rise in the number of betrayers like Judas. They are so mean-minded that they are easily tempted by money. Judas betrayed Jesus for just a few pieces of silver. Ultimately, Baba says, what happened to Judas? He felt miserable for having betrayed Jesus for monetary gains. He shed tears of repentance. He hit himself saying, fee on me, I am a traitor. I betrayed my own master and my God. Betrayal of God is the worst of all sins. Such betrayal can never be atoned in any number of births. So never try to betray God. Love all. Salute even those who criticize you because divinity is present in all. Do not give scope for anger and spoil your mind. Pray to God with love. Even in the past, all noble souls, souls and incarnations had to put up with criticism. Baba tells us, consider love as a very life. Love alone makes one's life sacred. One with love alone is a true human being. Love is man. Man is love. Man is God and God is love. It is only love that unifies all. So develop love, tread the path of truth and righteousness and lead a peaceful life. These four values are the life supporting principles. There are no greater powers, no greater deals, ideals, and no greater supports than these human values of truth, right action, love, peace, and non-violence. So devotees and friends, on this occasion, which we'll be celebrating within a few days, the birth anniversary of Lord Jesus Christ, how do we celebrate such an anniversary? Or how do we celebrate the anniversaries of all great and noble souls, all avatars, prophets, and messengers? Is there a right way to celebrate? And Baba, uh, Baba gives us some criteria, some things we should do so that we can say we are celebrating this birthday in the right way. He tells us, learn to lead ideal lives, be kind, compassionate, loving, and caring. He tells us, as devotees of God, we should not mind the criticisms of other people. Christ was the victim of such persons who were opposed to his teachings and leveled accusations against him. All good people have to face such troubles. Christ pursues his path in the face of many obstacles with strength and endurance. He tells us that everyone should seek to get nearer and nearer to God. All should realize that we have come from God. We all are children of God and we all should aspire to become one again with Him. We must feel that, that, that God dwells in our hearts. We must entertain that feeling. We must nurture that feeling and we must experience that feeling as often as we can. We must develop compassion in the heart because without it, the heart is only a stone, Baba says. We must seek to earn the grace of God. This is obtained by love and love alone. This then earns us proximity to God forever.
Baba tells us normally when you go visit into a country, we have to get a visa. And that visa is only for a short time. At the expiration of that visa, we have to return. But when we develop in love in our hearts and love in everything we do, then that qualifies us for an eternal visa that we live in close in proximity with him at all times. So Baba tells us we must also keep in sight the purity and message of Lord Jesus, whose birthday we are cel celebrating or will be celebrating. So devotees, Baba ends his advice to us that love is what we need to cultivate. So he tells us, start the day with love, fill the day with love, spend the day with love, end the day with love, and that is the way to God. Om Sayah. We wish you a Merry Christmas.